We're glad to see have you. This is the Signature Morning on Signature TV, and we will be, you know, moving ahead to another discussion. We'll be talking about the boy child. Actually, we always talk about a girl child in Nigeria. I mean, everywhere. We talk about the protection of girl child, the women, and all of that. But today, we're going to talk a little more about the boy child and peer influence. And to talk about it, here is Mr. Goswe Ogwana, Tech Coach Convenia, Brothers Connect. Good morning and welcome. Thank you. Good morning. It's Friday. How are you doing this Friday? Ah, it's another beautiful day, and we are grateful. Friday is always nice. Mm. Yeah. Okay, when we say boy child and peer influence, what do you think is important or relevant to talk about this time around? Um, I mean, the boy child is um, a very integral part of the society because, of course, every human being has a right to be acknowledged. And so um, the boy child and peer influence is such a critical topic because if we talk one and leave the other obviously we'll come to a point where the other part will suffer more because he's just trying to drag the other person along and so discussing on this topic or this subject is very critical because we want to strike a balance we wouldn't want to see a situation in the future where one is prepared against another who's not prepared mm. and it looks more uh, it looks more like a tug of war because the ideology the principles are supposed to be inculcated in the formative stage of one's life so that at the end of the day you end up having someone who um looking at what the society is all about is ready to change the narrative because already the situation is bad mm. Uh, looking at what's happening right now, do you think that the boy child or the issue of the boy child is being neglected for years now um, compared to the women folks? Obviously, yes. Uh, the boy child is always allowed to think that he, he should take care of himself. The, there's always this notion that they will come around things uh, in the process of time. At the end of the day, we see people who are grown physically but are not grown mentally, socially, and otherwise. Mm. And so the impact will be disastrous. Mm. Yeah. So what does uh, peer influence you know, uh, affect? How does it affect boys differently from, uh, uh, to compare with the girls? Um, the peer influence, whether negative or positive, actually affects the boy child to the degree because he, the society is developing him to be the one that should be in charge. The society is give, has given the male and uh, the male figure the privilege to always assume they are, the, they are people at the top of the game. And so if we look at the boy child and the need for us to critically equip them, you will see that um, we are more like um, preparing um, a peaceful society. If you look at the way the boy child has been handled, you, it's more like, um, okay, it seems the, like in the formal home setting, you will likely see parents try to pay special attention to the girl, telling the boy that the girl should be protected, telling the boy that the girl should enjoy set these certain privileges. But the boy who, who talks to him about what he should know and what he should enjoy is as if <laughs> we are giving him more responsibility than he is ready to carry. So talking about it now, it's more like trying to correct things from the very foundations. Mm. So if you look at the girl child, you will see that the girl child has every, like the framework is already there to help the girl child navigate several society groups um non-governmental organizations are there to start up with the child from the point where they are maybe six seven eight but the boy child is meant to face making money mm. is supposed to face this area of life this one is not for him how to handle issues as when they come is not of the game because it, they think he should handle issues. He is in the position to handle issues. However, he handles it is none of their business. So the boy child is very critical at this point because 
we are more like having a society where um, if you don't do this in the next 10 to 15 years the record of issues we are having in homes and the society this is the reflection we are talking about is not actually only in the home front it cuts across the society because we believe the family the unit smallest unit of the society and so the boy child is very critical at this point because the already the girl child has been enjoying a beautiful framework mm. and so the boy child needs to enjoy same not so that he should um begin to feel that he has been cheated no it is so that he there could be a balance generally in this society so what are the most common types of uh, influence you know inf influenced by the boy child or the boy child has experience as the uh, formative stage um the boy child has been um exposed to experiences like um risk um the boy child is trained to taste risk that sometimes they are not prepared to handle handling situations like okay the father perhaps may have been excused from the family for one reason or the other the boy child has friends and the friends will tell him the way to cope in such situations mm. and if peradventure he falls into the wrong hands obviously you will see things like you have to make it by all means so such exposure and influence makes the child to take life like he doesn't understand what is procedures about getting to resolve there are procedures to get to certain things so the influence becomes so bad that the child begins to think that any means to make you relevant is is is, is worth taking mm. that's one of the influences again um going on the positive side there are um influences that the child can learn how to take care of the home okay. all right i we were taught by another male that masculinity starts when you start taking care of things at the level where you are you don't expect people to do things for you when you are able to do them okay so at that point we started learning how to prepare the home when you wake up from the bed you know how to dress the bed when you use your items you know how to keep it safe and to arrange it at what age do we expect this type of responsibility from as before? early as four five because wow. if we wait when they are 10 11 um there could be there's a possibility they will be taught otherwise because they meet with their friends in school who tell you that their mate takes care of everything they meet with a society that tells them that once they get back to the house they are not doing anything or the that's 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 understanding that there are certain responsibilities that is meant for the boys which i think is not true we started learning early enough at age seven how to cook because my mom threatened us that our sisters will soon leave the house and so nobody will be expecting her to cook so at a seven we have started learning how to enter the kitchen and arrange things for ourselves so uh, it, 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 the age is critical from four five six upwards there are little little things what am i even saying even from age three provided this person the cognitive domain has been developed to know what to recognize this and recognize that to recognize that your school stockings should be kept here per time your plate should be kept here and if nobody is around you are expected to clean it up you know that age begin to make it easier for the child to see it as a normal thing because if the child passes or grows above that stage and you start teaching the child he thinks you are teaching him a foreign culture you are trying to make him to fall in line with your own terms not really what is generally acceptable mm. i have a friend you know who who thinks or believes that he doesn't cook he should not cook in fact his wife will not cook 
You can imagine. Mm -hmm. And so it means uh, there's going to be maid or house help who helps in the house to do everything. And now you are talking about growing up. You have to inculcate in them how to cook, how to take responsibility and all of that. Why in all that word, some people have been inculcated otherwise how to see life that oh i'm not here i'm not going to cook i'm not going to sw uh, sweep or do the dishes and all of that so my question is what particular norms are supposed to be inculcated into the boy child what norms exactly um well the norms of taking responsibility for whatever you want and whatever you want to enjoy part time okay that should be the first norm and if that is the case it doesn't okay um let's assume that we are being mixed up with other cultures where such is not obtainable it doesn't make you to feel um like some kind of human being that is doing something that is not what doing okay so the norm of taking responsibility the norm of respect you know the child the male figure things they should be at the receiving end okay i should be the one that should receive good morning i should be the one that should receive thank you well, well we're at certain points where i need to give out those things i find it difficult to give it out like a boy at age five was taught that he's a king and kings don't apologize and so such a child at that stage needed to be retaught because he offended a particular student in a class and he was asked to apologize he said kings don't say sorry so who taught him that someone somewhere who has another ideology altogether or, or particularly family yeah taught such a child mm. such um a, a norm and then the child grew up to that and you can imagine when the child grows up into a wider society he thinks that human beings are nothing whether they are your managers your 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 uh, teachers or whatever they are you take them as nothing provided there is no thing they are doing uniquely for you you think they should not be acknowledged so that norm of taking responsibilities that norm of offering or reciprocating respect that's very very critical that norm of um understanding that life it's not gonna happen always your own way you see people think that it should be my own way and if it's not my way then you it's not going to happen at all so you see a young man trying to be unreasonable in the home front it looks at the wife as nothing the opinions of the girl of the woman is nothing to because he has been told that such people can offer offer less or nothing so without understanding he thinks that everything should come from him and then there is a consequence to that mm -hmm. actually there's a consequence to that because there's always come a point in your life when you'll be insufficient of something mm. yeah yeah okay so it, it does look it looks like the, uh, the inculcation of norms is so unique to families and unique to cultures mm. uh, yes culture family and then the school system but unfortunately the parents have also a equipped the child to think that the teacher at some point at some point have no right to inculcate some norms and so if it is not coming from me from home if they do anything outside what i've taught you at home then is nothing you see the teachers struggling to really find a way to make the parent and the child know that this is correct the child is saying um, because it's not coming from what i already know at home so it's not correct. They, they tend to involve their parents to, to the point that they need to fight mm. uh, when they feel that their supposed right has been trampled upon. Okay, so um, the, the, the school is also one platform. The church is also pl one platform. And um, other organizations, social organizations, are also other platforms to inculcate because it doesn't live at the home because we are, we are all everywhere you cannot dwell in your home forever 
and all of that. So you need to step out. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about peer relationship and influence. Oh, beautiful. What strategies do you think that the boy child should uh, you know, employ to be able to relate with other people and learn positive norms, positive uh, uh, principles from peers? Okay. You see, um, through research, we've come to know that a good number of the behaviors or attitude we see mostly among young boys is learned from amongst their peers because at the affirmative stage, the young boy is seeking for validation. And so he wants to ensure that what he's doing is correct as, as, as approved by this person and this person and this person. And so there is um, the need for the child to understand that because we are coming from different cultures, you need to learn from different people to be able to fit in into the wider society. Um, you need to learn how to mingle with people of the same like, of the same mind, of the same vision and the same peoples. Um, the, what the child needs to know in selecting people we should mingle with, first of all, is if they sustain the same value system. Because if their value system is different from yours, obviously there will be conflicts along the line. And then um, you also need to understand that you need others, interdependence, to flow in the journey of life. And so in needing others, you need to relate with people. And in relating with people, there are several things you will learn. You will learn, um, you will learn how to really see life from the wider perspective because if you begin to think that life is just the way where you have boxed it you will get to a point where you will need certain things and they will not be dead for you again so during the peer influence stage where the boy need, relates with another person he learns how to relate with the society how to how to take life and people serious how mm. to maximize opportunities when opportunities comes because at certain stage of life there are very many opportunities that are um, attended to those um, stages and so the child needs to know how to maximize opportunity so in the course of the play, um, pair relationship you know how to take advantage of people there could be the um, the seed of honor you will need to learn that honor is a ladder now what what you acknowledge is there is a possibility that it will keep coming all right so in the pair relationship they will also learn on how to relate with others in the corporate world yes okay if you are outside the home and you are in the midst of other people and it's the work environment you don't need to you remove sentiment so there are people that needs to be very objective once they are dealing with others mm -hmm. and so you learn this from people you learn this from your peer group and it's a positive influence on you you learn how to even climb to the next ladder mm. yes you need to learn how to climb to the next ladder because sometimes when you experience failures over time it may not tell good on you when while growing a child that fails common in trance for instance or that fails um, junior work for instance and repeats such exams again and again the emotional or psychological impact on the child when he sees others climbing up and he's still at this point will obviously affect him so he needs to know what to do at certain stages of his life so as not to return to mm. those things all right so uh, we've seen boy, boys you know growing up they they grew up from this good family with beautiful norms incorporated in them and all of that and they're moving mm -hmm. into high school and and universities they begin to change and then you see you begin to notice this change in them some parents at that point begin to give excuses for those boys oh he's becoming a man he'll figure life out and all of that so my question is how can what are the common signs of negative influence 
that boys or maybe guys let me use the mm. word <laughs> okay 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 the boy child yeah faces um you're talking about the signs yes you need to take note of you see um the first sign is when the person starts getting withdrawn mm. he wants to be by himself he wants to be alone he wants to be allowed to do things by himself he doesn't want um, the parents to come in he doesn't want the father figure mother figure whoever figure that he values to come in in certain critical life decision that is when you start noticing that there are influences because whatever that would destroy one will actually have to separate him from good reasoning people that will stand a place to correct people that will stand a place to guide and when you notice such <coughs> from a child or from a guy you need to actually massage his ego to call him back very very critical because at that point he doesn't need a shout he doesn't need all of those that's pro that's point number one number two at that point you will start noticing that the child wants to be heard in every situation he wants to be he wants his voice to be above every other voice as if somebody informed him somewhere that they are trying to bring down your voice mm. they are trying to silence if you don't stand up on your right even if your right is wrong and so when you start noticing aggression somebody being overly aggressive over things not taking to good reasoning not coming down in over situations to think critically on the way out you see any situation that doesn't come you don't end up provide preferring sol solution True. is actually is actually going to destroy continually mm -hmm. uh, continuous in in, in in the continuum it's going to have a very bad impact because when issues are thrown at people they are supposed to take them chew them and provide a way forward so when you see a child becoming aggressive on in in in, in a certain stages you have to take note of that then number three when the boy child or the guy start making excuses flimsy excuses over things that should be done why is this not done i've not done this because you will know that somebody else is occupying that time that space the right thing is supposed to be done mm, okay okay just because of time i will just have to ask you this one question i hope you are citing on just one minute okay. what message do you have to to boy child on how they can handle peer influence effectively okay just in less than one minute all right the bible says i'll come from the spiritual dimension that uh, the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom and you know that in life you have to understand and trace your way back to your creator he has a format on how to navigate through life so you have to understand that sometimes life may not be what you think about it you have to depend on your creator and then again you have to have the understanding to speak to people communication is very vital mm. communication is very vital so that's the point for the boy child learn to communicate mm. Thank you very much. Link to talk, link to communicate. And that's uh, Mr. Goswe Owana, tech coach and the uh, Convener Brothers Connect. I wonder what Convener Brothers Connect is all about. Well, I'm going to ask you now <laughs> another interview I have to you know, invite you for. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. All right, that's the most we can take for this particular interview. We're going to bring you the internet watch for you to know what's happening in the social media, on the social media, rather. And then we'll take you to our Abuja studio for the continuation of the Signature Morning Show. My name is Belinda Mwobodo. Thanks for watching.